Welcome back to the coffee bar with your favorite bartender, A5 Cup of Coffee. We are here to do the overview for The Boys Season 2, Episode 7. We're almost at the end of the season, and these episodes just keep getting better and better. Um, I, I'm happy that they're doing it the week by week thing, but at the same time, man, I want to see Episode 8 so bad after this. So, join me. Go ahead and get your drink. Check out the previous video. Get your drink, come back to this one, and we're gonna go ahead and discuss everything. Mild and heavy spoilers ahead, so if you haven't seen it yet, watch this video anyway. <laughs> anyway, um, our drink is gonna be the Apple Teeny today. So yeah, we got a little sophisticated. There we go. And what we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get into everything here. So, um, yeah, so we start off the episode with an extremist murdering uh, a, a cashier. Uh, they're, they're hanging on every word that Stormfront and Homelander are actually putting out there. And um, uh, take it take it how you all want it, but I'm, I'm interpreting it as, you know, Stormfront, she knows how to control social media. Uh, as she said in a few episodes back, uh, she has soldiers that are ready and willing to do whatever she wants and this extremist guy d does go ahead and murder this cashier just because he thinks uh, you know he may be a, a soup terrorist or anything like that um, and Stormfront knows how to play off people's fears and I believe that she is actually going to be if not successful very close to being successful for getting uh, soup, uh, more superpower beings made. Uh, she basically flipped the whole compound B thing and said, hey, you know what? We need more soups. Uh, these super terrorists are popping up. They're pouring in. And she basically is using people's fear of immigrants. Uh, mind you, anybody, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> but we're not going to get political here. But she's using everybody, uh, well, some her soldiers' fear of immigrants and their fear of um, the, the the super terrorists or the super villains to actually flip the whole compound B on its head. And Homelander and now has joined in. They're showing that they're a couple, uh, you know, doing a little affection here and there. And they are winning a lot of people over. Um, so politically, they have a foothold in, in the U.S. right now. And while Stormfront is kind of playing on everybody's fear as far as immigrants, Homelander is saying, hey, you know what? Basically make America great again. So he, he, he said, you know, remember when everything was safe? It literally never was. I mean, y'all saw what he did in season one. He, he's, again, playing off people's fears, and they are definitely hanging on his every word. So you see, uh, after the little rally that they had in the beginning, they go ahead and uh, they, they kind of go to the side and you find out that they have captured Starlight. Uh, Black Noir goes in. They say Starlight is a, you know, a traitor. They put that out there uh, as, as a matter of fact, and they play off of that as well. And they actually capture Starlight and put her in a holding facility where she can't use her powers. Now, Stormfront is keeping her alive. That way they could get more support from... Uh, the media and the people that she already has support from. Uh, she She's very smart and, and very strategic in what she does. And so Homelander, he actually wants to uh, uh, kill her off. But, um, you know, Stormfront convinces him otherwise. And then you see her kind of get sad about, you know, not being able to, you know, see her child because, you know, her child passed away uh, from the last episode and, you know, uh, of Alzheimer's. And so she's kind of missing her. So Homelander has this great idea. You know what? I know what we can do. They go and visit Ryan and Becca. And it's actually so much tension in the air. He introduces Stormfront. And you see that Homelander and Stormfront together are definitely a bigger monster than Homelander by himself. Because Stormfront knows how to manipulate what's going on to her benefit. And Homelander is more of a straightforward type person. So what they basically end up doing is they end up swaying Ryan to their side. They end up, you know, letting him know, hey, you know what? Um, have, do you ever play 2K? Do you ever, you know, do some of the things that regular kids do? 
And we find out his mom has kind of been sheltering him from a lot, not just his powers. And um, so Homelander actually plays off of that. And, you know, Becca, you know, has this kind of talk with Homelander, you know, kind of telling her, hey, telling him, hey, you know what? I'm his mom. He needs his mom. And Homelander, while I don't particularly super agree with him, I kind of agree with him. Because he's saying, hey, you know what? You're sheltering him from the rest of life. And that's how I was raised. And he's kind of right. He was raised in a facility cut off from the rest of the world. And he didn't know what to do with it once he found out, you know, that this it was more than this. And we're going to get to that in a, in a second. But um, in any case, he shows Ron that, you know, they, they don't have uh, neighbors, that the whole facility is fake. And Ron basically leaves with Homelander and Stormfront by the mid of the, the, the episode. He, he's upset with his mom that she had basically, um, he feels like she's lied to him. So, in any case, they fly off all together. And Becca is just left heartbroken because, you know, he's ba he basically tells her, hey, you know what? I hate you. you. You lied to me. I'm going with dad. And that's what they do. So, yeah, check that part out. Uh, this is a little bit more details into it, but I don't want to spoil too much for you all. But, yeah, check that part out. So, moving forward, you actually see that Mother's Milk and Mallory actually leave Huey with Lamplighter. And they go and visit Vogelbaum, which is the doctor that actually uh, helped with Homelander. And they try to get some information out of him, and they try to actually get them swayed over to their side or information so they can make a strong case against Vought when they uh, take this thing to trial, which um, which is actually coming up. And so they have that plan. And meanwhile, they um, the, the 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 senator is actually questioning Lamplighter, uh, you know, asking him, you know, what he knew about the facility that he was at and all of those things. And he basically let him know, hey, Stormfront was running the show. I was just following orders, and you kind of see Lamplighter's, for lack of better words, light kind of fade while he's telling them all of this information. Um, meanwhile, while, while they're trying to get their case together with Lamplighter, because he's the lead witness in, in the whole case, Mallory and Mother's Milk go and uh, they're, they're with Vogelbaum and he's refusing to give them any information. And so since he is, you know, Mallory hits up a butcher who while they're doing that he has split off and because his mom called him and said his dad passed away well it's set up his dad is still alive and you kind of get a peek into butcher's childhood you, you kind of get a little small peek they, they may show it a little bit more but you kind of see why butcher is the way he is his dad was one of those dads that didn't want him to be soft per se and for lack of a better word uh you know he he, he more than likely beat him more than likely, uh, he, he caught himself making him tough. And you kind of see that where Butcher gets some of his traits, how he treats Huey, how he treats his partners. You know, he's never really giving them too much of a, too much of a, um, you know, congratulations. He never really giving them much as far as, um, as far as, you know, communication or anything. And you kind of see why, because his dad is such a, but like he's a bigger butt than he is. He even actually gets Butcher to actually choke him because he starts talking about Butcher's brother. And yeah, he, he's not having it. So, you know, mom comes out, breaks it up, and you know, Butcher leaves. So Butcher does say tell Mallory, you know what? I'll handle Vogelbaum. Don't worry about it. So when Mallory and Mother's Milk leave, she gives Mother Milk a offer that's like, hey, you know what? Maybe you should get back to your family. I lost my family during this war that we're kind of raging against the soups. I don't want you to lose your family too. I know they're gone as of right now, but they're not gone like my family is. Uh, and we all know what happened with Lamplighter and her family. So that being stated, she gave him an offer. Hey, you know what? I know you won't get the, the revenge that you want. You, you know, you won't be able to finish the mission because this is never going to be done. This work is never going to be done. Um, why don't you take your family? I'll ship you all off. Nobody will know where y'all went. And we just really, at this point, don't know if he accepted that offer or not. He, he kind of leaned towards not, in my eyes, uh, uh, accepting the offer because he still feels like he has work to do. But, um, yeah, she did give him that offer. So, meanwhile, while all of that is happening, 
uh, Butcher pays attention uh, a, a visit to Vogelbaum. On the other hand, we actually get have Huey and Lamplighter. They of course find out about uh, Starlight. So they go to save her and her mom. They're both actually being held in the vault area. So, you know, Huey thinks he's convinced Lamplighter to go ahead and help him. Well, they get to the tower and you find out Lamplighter has his own plan. He actually wanted to kill himself in front of his statue. And he is just distraught because they have taken his statue down from the, the seven where he used to be. They have taken him down and he's just... He's at his wit's end, and like I told you, his light had already faded when he was actually giving them all the information. And so he just sets fire to himself. Sets fire to himself. Uh, and like, Huey just can't believe what has happened. And he realizes, hey, you know, Lamplighter let me in with his handprint, so I need his hand. So he literally, uh, 127 hours, <laughs> his hand, and then takes his hand and he goes and he uh while Lamplighter set himself on fire it actually frees uh Starlight so she gets out on her own and he go um uh, Huey thinks he saved Lamplighter but in in turn he saves her mom and then they actually end up meeting in the middle of the hallway and she's like what are you doing here and they have this little moment kind of not moment but kind of moment and she realizes he really does love her even though the lies and the stuff from the beginning in, uh, in, in season one. So they had their little moment and um, all of a sudden Starlight has this face off with, um, oh, I forgot, yeah, right before that, you know, Star Starlight has this face off with Black Noir and you kind of see how powerful he is. He's like kicking her butt up and down the room, man. Like she doesn't have a shot in the head. Uh, but Queen Maeve actually shows up and we'll get to her in a second. Queen Mae shows up and she actually puts a almond joy in his mouth. And you find out he has a nut allergy. And she kicks his uh his EpiPen and he just kind of falls out. He's just kind of, we I don't think he's going to die. But you actually kind of see part of his face. So, semi-spoiler, I don't think he's going to play the part that he played in the comics. But I still think he's going to play a pretty big part in all of this. In any case... Uh, he's kind of down for the count thanks to Maeve, uh, but before that, yeah, Starlight was getting the business. Uh, and then she meets uh, Huey and all of that. So, um, they leave out. So, Queen Maeve, Maeve is actually really distraught in this episode. Elena actually ends up leaving her because of the tape she saw in the last episode. She can't stop thinking about it. And Maeve, she reacts, um, she actually <laughs> flips over a table, but... I will say she does have good reason because Elena kept on saying, hey, I want to see the real you. I want to know what's going on. Why won't you let me in, this, that, and the other? And Maeve lets her in, and she's like, I need some space. And so Maeve starts to spiral, much like she did in the comics earlier on. And you kind of see her. She's kind of laid up with two guys. She's getting high. She's just like, you know what? Forget it. You know, I'm, I'm over it. But she does, you know, get herself together in order to help uh, Starlight against Black Noir, but I do believe don't quote me on this, but I think Maeve is coming to an end. Um, she, she's playing less and less of a part. You know, she was kind of debuted in season one, but I think Maeve may don't quote me on this, but I think she may meet her end uh, at the end of this season or the beginning of next season. I think that's going to be the WTF moment of the end of the season. Um, so speaking of WTF moments, we're about to get to one. So Butcher goes to visit Vogelbaum and he basically tells him, hey, you know what? If you don't tell me the information I need or do what I need you to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill your daughter who's here. I'm going to find your sons. I'm going to find their kids. I'm going to kill everybody if you don't do what I need. And Vogelbaum is like, how can you be such a butt about this? But I mean, Butcher is at his wit's end. He needs... He needs something to happen, and he makes it happen. So during the uh, during the thing uh, during the uh, actual uh, trial, Vogelbaum does show up, and he kind of looks Homelander in the eye, and then he kind of looks over, and so you know the uh, you know one of the judges in the uh, jurors in the front is kind of like you know you got five minutes to make your case, and guys, major spoiler for the end of this episode. 
So, you know, Butcher, he's like, I got you. He sees Homer in his face when Bubble Bomb rolls up. He's like, I got you. Everybody's kind of excited because it looks like it's going to, you know, the testimony is going to be great. You know, you got the um, the candidate that, you know, the woman candidate that has been kind of uh, lobbying against Vault the, the entire season. She's there. She's she's happy. And all of a sudden, right as Vogel Bomb is about to speak, man, his head explodes. Yeah, that's what I mean by mind blowing. His head explodes. And then people's heads start popping all over the place. Just like um just like the lady did in the first episode of this season. I mean, they just start popping everywhere. You just see splats across the face and all of this. And Mallory gets the gets the candidate out of the room. She's distraught, but Mallory does get her out of the room. So she doesn't die. But even um Shockwave, um, um, A Train's replacement. Even he gets killed. So it's not just humans. I mean, people are popping all over the place, which makes me think. I don't. It may be the 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 um the soup that was in the facility in the last episode that actually made the guy pop because it's kind of reminiscent of that. But honestly and truly, I think it has more to do with the uh the church. I honestly think that because. Shockwave died, who was supposed to be A Train's replacement, and A Train is now kind of sort of with the church. So I'm thinking it may be a suit from the church because they did have suits in there from the first season. We did see uh, one of the people that Starlight, you know, knew he had powers. He actually choked Huey, as a matter of fact, last season. So I'm thinking it's that. I might be wrong. Don't 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 hold me to that. Uh, but I'm thinking is uh, that's what's going on there. But Homelander and Stormfront, they, they don't look exactly scared, but they are looking very bewildered on what's happening, as a matter of fact. So, they don't die. The, the, of course, those who don't die. But, yeah, people, everybody around them uh, is getting uh, just massacred. So, you see Butcher, and then you see, you actually see the Deep and A-Train in the, in the bar at the end. And they actually just had turned off... Um, Turned off the news about you know they're kind of uh, the church is kind of smearing uh, the, the the guy who uh, the guy with the arrows that was helping the deep in the beginning they're kind of smearing him and they turned off of that um, but yeah the deep and A Train are just like distraught as well and then you go to the boys and Butcher is just ah man he his face says it all he is completely distraught on what had just happened because he just knew. He had them, and then this happens. And then the episode ends. So, absolutely nuts episode. It's actually really great, but um, I definitely want you all to go ahead and check it out. Let me know what y'all think about the episode, man. Like I said, I absolutely loved it. Um, I, I would say one of the better episodes, but the ep I, I can't put my finger on any episode that's been can really kind of lacking this this season uh every one of them has been full and packed and had an impactful turn for each character i mean character development is awesome in this uh even for the quote-unquote side characters at this point i mean like even in this episode frenchie and um the female actually start having a little bit more of a conversation she starts to teach him her language so i mean everybody's uh having their ups and downs right now and I can't wait to the next episode to see how all of this ends this season. Uh, we already know we're getting a season three, so we don't have to worry about being on a cliffhanger for too long. But, you know, of course, it is still going to be about a year. In any case, guys, please let me know. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, join me on my Facebook Live. I'm actually going to be doing a movie and show entertainment news show every Monday at 7 p.m. And I'm going to be dropping a video here as far as uh overview on every thursday and excuse me every friday and saturday so y'all watch out for those go ahead and check out the albertini from the previous video again like share subscribe hit that little bell i appreciate you all joining me at the coffee bar it's been a five cup of coffee have a good one